Hello everyone, welcome to today's session of daily prelims practice. Today we are going to discuss six questions on these topics. You must have been reading about waste to energy in newspaper these days a lot, especially in the context of MCD election in Delhi. UPSC back in 2019 has asked a question on waste to energy. They gave the term pyrolysis and plasma gasification, which was in the context of waste to energy technologies. You please try your hand on this question on waste to energy. Statement 1. Waste to energy plants produce clean energy and does not produce any greenhouse gas. Statement 2 is municipal solid waste is considered as a renewable energy source in India. Well, as you can understand from the tone of the first statement, it sounds like an absolute extreme statement. Waste to energy plants are cleaner than incineration because it ensures complete combustion and it converts every carbon-based product into carbon dioxide. But carbon dioxide is a potent greenhouse gas. So the statement obviously is incorrect. Now concerning statement 2, I must tell you that at present, there is no specific legislation that governs renewable energy in India. And the principal legislation that governs the electricity sector in India is Electricity Act 2003. Renewable energy will obviously fall under the category of electricity sector. So it is governed under the provision of Electricity Act 2003. But the thing is, Electricity Act 2003 itself does not define renewable energy. But regulations given under the Electricity Act, one of the regulation of 2020 has defined renewable energy. It defines renewable energy as electricity generated from renewable energy sources. And it has given out the list of renewable energy sources that includes wind energy, solar energy, mini hydro, biomass, biofuels, landfills and sewage gas. And it also includes municipal solid waste, industrial waste, geothermal energy, ocean energy, the hybrid of above sources or, or any other energy source as notified by the ministry. The ministry of power because all these things are coming under the Electricity Act 2003. And in 2019, Ministry of Power has categorized large hydropower projects also as part of renewable energy sources. Previously, only mini hydro projects up to 25 megawatt was included under the definition of renewable energy sources. But now even the larger ones are included. The original point of discussion here was municipal solid waste. They are regarded as renewable energy sources. So yes, this statement is correct. Answer is option B. These days, you must also have been quite often reading about Assam Meghale border issues. The issue has been explained to you in the DNS already. And you must also have been aware that UPSC sometimes asks some basic concept from the issue that is making round in the newspaper. Just to cite you one instance, UPSC has asked about the geography of Arunachal Pradesh in 2014. The reason was that Arunachal Pradesh in the context of India-China border issues and the overall strained relation was a news. China started to give staple visas to the residents of Arunachal Pradesh claiming sovereignty over the state. UPSC anyways asked about it in GS Paper 2 under international relation but in prelims they asked the geography of Arunachal Pradesh. Similarly, I ask you a question here regarding geography of Assam and Meghalaya. Listen to it carefully and please answer it. It has three statements. I'll read the statement one by one. And before I spell it out, whether the statement is true or false, you must be able to come up with an answer of true or false of the statements in your mind. Brahmaputra flows through both Assam and Meghalaya. Well, Meghalaya lies in the Brahmaputra River Basin, but its tributaries flows through Meghalaya. Brahmaputra as such does not flow through Meghalaya. It just touches the border of Meghalaya. But we can't say it flows through Meghalaya. It flows through Arunachal Pradesh, Assam and it goes into Bangladesh. So the statement is incorrect. Norkic Biosphere Reserve spans through both Assam and Meghalaya. Again, you have to know this. The Biosphere Reserves, National Parks, Wildlife Sanctuaries. You have to have the list of them and know their distribution throughout India. Norkic Biosphere Reserve lies wholly within Meghalaya. So it doesn't span through both Assam and Meghalaya. So the statement is incorrect again. The critically endangered pygmy hog can be found in both Assam and Meghalaya.
Pygmy hog is critically endangered mammal and as part of your prelims preparation for environment and biodiversity, you have to have the list of critically endangered species, endangered species, vulnerable species, threatened species and so on. At least the critically endangered and the endangered species you have to know very well because their number would not be too many. And as a matter of fact, you would know that pygmy hog, the last left population, are to be found in the Manas National Park, which is in Assam. So there is no well-known habitat of pygmy hog in the state of Meghalaya. Statement again is incorrect. The answer would be option D. You know very well India has got the G20 presidency and to celebrate the presidency of India in G20, 100 monuments would be lit. Most of them UNESCO's World Heritage Site. UPSC in the past has started to ask about temples or important places to be matched up with the state or the region. Here there are three monuments or well-known places to be matched with the states. Rani Kivau has been matched with Rajasthan. Great Himalayan National Park Conservation Area has been matched with Uttarakhand. And Dhulavira has been matched with Gujarat. How many of these pairs are correctly matched? One, two, three, none. Well, Rani Kivau is on the bank of River Saraswati. So it is in the state of Gujarat. It is near Patan. It was built in 8th century as a memorial to a king. It is a spectacular. It is distinctive form of subterranean water resource and storage system. The kind of storage system that has been constructed in India since 3rd millennium BC. Rani Kivau was added in the UNESCO's World Heritage Site list in 2014. The Great Himalayan National Park, you would know this is in the state of Himachal Pradesh, not Uttarakhand, so incorrect. Dholavira, this is ancient Harappan site, one of the most preserved site of the ancient Harappan civilization. And this indeed is in the state of Gujarat. So the answer is option A. For various reasons, you must have been reading about Election Commission of India and how to strengthen the institution. UPSC keeps on asking about constitutional bodies. Election Commission is one of them. In 2017, UPSC has asked a question on Election Commission of India. But that's not the only instance. UPSC has asked about Election Commission of India and other constitutional bodies multiple times. Here there's a question having two statements. Identify which one is our correct. The number of members in the Election Commission has been fixed by the Constitution. See Article 324. Clause 2 of this article says the election commission shall consist of chief election commissioner and such number of other election commissioners, if any, as the president may from time to time fix. It further says the appointment of chief election commissioner and other commissioners shall subject to the provision of any law made in the behalf by parliament be made by the president. So the appointment is done by the president on the recommendation of cabinet, of course, and the number of election commissioners has not been specified in the constitution. So this statement is incorrect. The members of the commission are appointed by the committee consisting of prime minister, leader of opposition in the Lok Sabha and speaker of the Lok Sabha. Well, you understand the debate surrounding the appointment of chief election commissioner of India. There has been many committees, many commissions, including Law Commission of India, suggesting a search panel. The one like this or the one consisting of Prime Minister, the leader of opposition in Lok Sabha and Chief Justice of India. But there is no search committee or recommending body like that. Presently, the appointment is done by the President on the advice of the Cabinet. So this statement is incorrect as well. Great Indian Bustard famously keep appearing in the newspaper, obviously is a very important species. UPSC asks about such species which remain in news. UPSC has previously asked about lion-tailed macaque. It was in news because of protest in the Silent Valley National Park. UPSC has asked about lions. UPSC has asked about elephants, swam deers. The species that remain in news, UPSC generally ask about them. Here's the question for you on Great Indian Bustard. The Great Indian Bustard has been included in which of the following? Schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act 1972. You understand that the Schedule 1 gives highest possible protection to any species. Schedule 2 also gives protection but the punishment under Schedule 1 is more stringent. Schedule 3 and Schedule 4. The trade in species included in Schedule 3 and 4 are prohibited but the punishments and regulations are to a lower degree. 
Schedule 5 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972 considered of species which are vermin, species for which hunting would be allowed. Sometime rhesus monkeys, nilgai, the population of species that goes beyond the carrying limit of the ecosystem, for the limited duration those species are put in Schedule 5 and hunting, culling of those species are permitted. You must also know that even plants are included under Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 under Schedule 6. Plant species under Schedule 6, their cultivation, trade in those species are regulated, sometimes prohibited. Great Indian Bursted, they are also included in Appendix 1 of Sites. It was done in 2020, along with the Indian Elephant and the Bengal Florican. Species Recovery Program under, under Integrated Development of Wildlife Habitat Scheme Great Indian Bursted, they are also included in the Integrated Development of Wildlife Habitat Scheme. There are many species, like Asian Wild Buffalo, Asiatic Lion. You can go through the list and you will also find Great Indian Bursted. Appendix 1 of UN Convention on Migratory Species, it also has Great Indian Bursted. It's an important species, so basically most of the conventions for the protection of birds and wildlife in general will have Great Indian Bursted. Answer, intuitively, will be option D. There is an article in the Hindu, Books on Patna, a fading city once loved by age-old rulers and travellers. UPSC has asked question on travellers before. UPSC has asked in 2017 this question. It was on a little difficult side, but the thing is, it is there in NCERT. The article mentions about some travellers, especially about Hyun Sang. So let me ask you a question on Hyun Sang. The Chinese pilgrim Hyun Sang visited India during Harsha's time. Of course he did, and he did that in 17th century. We know many things about Harsha's kingdom because of writings of Hyun Sang. Hyun Sang spent nearly six years in Nalanda University and studied grammar, logic, many sects of Buddhism there. Somewhere you'll see around five years, somewhere you'll see around six years. But be assured, UPSC will not drag you into this debate of five or six. Since it's mentioned nearly, it's all safe to consider this statement as true. The answer is option C.